friends. Thank you for coming and visiting with me once again. Today, I was reading in Matthew, and I was up to chapter 9, and they were talking about the um, man who um, be healed, and Jesus said, Believe that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched the eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And um, so he did a lot of these kind of miracles, and I think people are pretty much used to uh, hearing that he did these things and pretty much believe that he can. But the question arises, does he still heal? So today I thought I would uh, just discuss that a little bit because I do believe in healing. And I have because the uh, church that I went to for over 32 years, they did. And, and often people, they prayed and often people got healed. So um, I was in trouble. I was going to a kidney special, so I was visiting my daughter. And a group of young people, believers, knocked on my door and spreading the good news that in chapter 10, he called the disciples, uh, to his 12 disciples, and he gave them all the names. There's Peter and Simon, Andrew, his brother, James, um, John who was uh, P uh, James's brother, Peter and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, um, Levis, whose name was Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. So he tells who all the 12 are, and here's what he sent them out. Now you realize he's already out with them. Um, preaching, crowds and crowds of people, the little story of a, the little boy's fish and bread that Jesus fed thousands of people on the mountainside. But here he's come to the point where he's going to send his disciples out. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is as near as your hand. It is near. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely you have been given. Freely give. Okay, so we're going to put these two together. We believe that we can pray and God will heal us. Why don't we believe that we can pray for somebody else and God will heal them? All things are done according to his will. Jesus says that if you believe in my name, ask what you will, and the Father will give it. And in another place he said, if you ask believing, you will receive. So, I am the recipient of a number of healings. The little story about me being in trouble with my going to a kidney specialist. These young people understood this. And they believed God for the words that Jesus said. And again, I have to say, if you don't read it, you won't know what it says in here. You won't know what's available to you. So these people spoke to me for a minute and then asked me if anybody in the house was sick. And I, of course, was. But I was, you know, believing if God would heal me. And um, then I thought, hey, wait a minute. You know, I would heard them. They were just people that believed in Jesus. It wasn't any great wonder uh, 
a cult type thing that was going on here. So I said, sure. So they came in and they prayed. And the young preacher gave me a card with a number, telephone number. He was expecting a praise report. Well, I laid that card down and I'm not sure I ever even kept it or knew where it was. But um, later they came back on a visit and he got his praise report. The next day I got up and there was no pain, no blood, and it never came back. And I thought, hey, wait a minute. What is this kind of faith? Because I thought I had all kind of faith. I, God had kept me many, many years. I was in, way up in my 60s by then. I'd been a Christian since I was 20. I thought I had all kind of faith. But this, this was something I thought was different. So they did come back. And eventually I went... Um, to their meetings at their church and actually um, was at their church for many many years and I learned faith faith when you put it to um, really put it down and stand on it will grow that's the good thing about it faith will grow and we're given a measure of faith and if we allow ourselves to use it and depend on it, we get miracles. So now I'm going to tell you about the miracle. Not the only miracle, because I've had the miracle people bringing food when I had babies and an abandoned husband. Um, all kinds of miracles. So I thought I had a lot of faith. But... For all the doubt and say that the disciples were the only ones that could pray, lay hands and pray, or anoint them with oil, as in my James video, I, I talked about that, that we pray one for another and we will be healed. Well, you put all of these scriptures together and you get this overwhelming that this is not over. These gifts of um, that got that the Holy Spirit has for us. Now you have to realize the Holy Spirit. These things are from God. We ourselves can do nothing without Him. And as a matter of fact, Jesus said He was the vine and we were the branches, and without Him we could do nothing. So if you want to think that people get the big head and think, "Well, I've got this gift of healing." No, God does the healing. But we'll get to the miracle that changed my life. I was hearing impaired from childhood. And I wore hearing aids. I'd had about six surgeries so that I could hear with hearing aids. And one of my ears was totally deaf. I'd been that way for 10 years. And when my hearing aid would go... Um, I couldn't hear. I'd be in a store, my daughter said, and I would just get this blank look, and she knew that my hearing aid batteries went out. Well, a um, missionary from Mexico was coming up, and and um, I went. He was well known for the work he did does down there, and in the end, I have a lot of uh, hearing in ear infections and things which causes my hearing problems and uh, I went up and he finally got to me and asked me what I needed he was a tall man and I'm barely five foot um, and he just reached down and uh, not even a hug and he said uh, be healed and I began to a lot of the people there, if any of you have ever been to these healing services or when someone calls people up, a lot of times they um, drop to the floor. And I'd often wondered what that was. But everybody around me, and he was very famous, there were a lot of people there. And everybody around me was, so I thought, well, you know, I'll just sit down here on the floor. I won't get crushed. And all of a sudden, I started to shake. 
I shook so hard, my brain rattled. And my friend came over helping me get up and I kind of got back to the chair. And I'm sitting there and there was a couple behind me and they were talking. And the music was so loud. I mean, I, I, I'd been shaking and trying to, you know, um, just relax in that chair. And um, so I took my hearing aid out because the, the music was so loud. And when I took my hearing aid out, which should have rendered everything the problem, I could hear this couple behind me talking. I was shocked. Going forward for the healing was for my infections that I kept recurring. I expected to be deaf the rest of my life. As you see this morning, I have no hearing aids in my ears. And that was maybe 10 years ago that this happened. So I, I still got my hearing aid in my hand and I'm walking over to the... Um, pastor's wife and I said I think I just got healed they had my hearing aid in a little glass case on the front wall for a number of years because they would do the healings and putting them up on the wall now these things that they had on the wall were not show and tell they had uh, wheelchairs and everything so anyway this was what this church did it equipped the saints for the work of the ministry and at 68 years of age, being a believer for, well, I was 20. You can do the math. From 20, I had never learned how to be, um, to minister to anybody, to talk to them. So, faith. The next day, I couldn't hear anything. Not too many people have heard this part of it. My daughter says, Mom, do not put that hearing aid back in. I said, okay. So I went to church, and they all prayed for me because they knew that I'd lost my hearing that I'd gotten the night before. And three days later, my hearing came back. My grandson didn't believe it. So Melissa stood him. That's, that's my daughter's name, his mother. She had him on, be on the back porch. She says, Derek, say something to Grandma. And I had my back to the window. He stood out there and said, Grandma, can you hear, hear me? And I said, yes, Derek, I can hear you. And he was flabbergasted. So God heals. And people can pray. And God will hear their prayer for the person that they are praying for. This is what ministry is. This is what he told the disciples to do in this chapter. Chapter 10. And as you go, preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. And, you know, all this. Cast out the devils. Now, I have to tell you. You don't have to stand there and say, I cast out devils. This, what this says is that you can pray for people and you can ignite their faith because it isn't their, their, um, their faith. If you noticed about the man with the daughter and even with these, uh, lepers that he heals, it isn't their faith. It's our faith. Those of us that want to help a friend. And so, um, the church family that I had there, if someone told us they had a headache, we stopped and prayed for them in the name of Jesus. That's which is what we're told to do. And um, believe that uh, God will hear our prayers. But it is our belief. We, if we want, and I did, I really wanted to be that person that could go out and talk to somebody and encourage them that God loved them encourage them that uh, he had a, a kingdom of heaven that it, they will inherit and that is their inheritance is to be in the kingdom of heaven and that the kingdom of heaven is love and peace and joy and righteousness uh, and that they're not alone and if they are sick if they have a financial problem 
pray. I don't have enough time on this video to say how, um, and my sister was the one who helped me to have the faith for finances. And, um, but it's our faith. With faith, nothing is impossible with God. And that should give us encouraging in this day and age. And we don't have to believe that those gifts that the, that Jesus bestowed on the disciples, they, they went past Pentecost because the Holy Spirit was sent to us and he is the one who does the work. Not us. We just have to be willing. Care enough about those around us that we speak the kingdom of God in its love and its goodness and its righteousness and that we do pray for all these where he said heal the sick. They, they were praying for them. They weren't operating on them or, you know, like surgery or anything, which I'm not against. But I am saying faith is still alive. It is still available. These gifts are still available. If we will begin to study the things that Jesus told, because believing in him means that you're following him. You're a disciple, just like those 12, the names that I, I just gave you. You're following him and you're learning like those disciples were. When he sent them out, the, in a later passage, it says that they came back absolutely rejoicing that they that these all the wonderful things that they had uh, experienced and he said do not be happy that the spirits were subject to you be happy that your name is written in the book of life and in the end that is the main thing healing is not for gain it's not for notoriety it isn't for a big website it isn't for anything one of the most admired and loved men that i know is from africa and he has the most happy joyful um humble quiet person i ever met and he could be very famous but he says, it's not what you think. He says, don't go for the miracles. Go. Preach the good news. Encourage somebody. Talk to them as a friend. And if they tell you that they're having problems, you know you can pray and something can be done about it. That's what ministering is. People think it's somebody behind a pulpit. It isn't. It's our one-on-one -on -one daily walk as disciples of Jesus to do what he sent those disciples out to do. Preach the good news of the kingdom of God because don't forget, don't ever forget that is our final home. So we need to know a little bit about it. I'll end with that. I thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope that your day will be filled with many miracles as mine has in my life. That is my prayer for you, that you will experience this fellowship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ that brings all these favors, which is what miracles are. They're not miracles to God. We call them miracles. But it's the favor of God on us. And he wants to bless us. He wants to bless us. So with that, have a wonderful day and shalom.